Welcome to Using Canvas Gradebook to Invite Communication with the Message Students Who function. So thanks for joining us. I wish we were in person or synchronous so I could know your reasons for joining this particular session, but I would invite you for just to take maybe 20 seconds and think why you picked this particular presentation to attend. What's driving you? What do you want to get out of this few minutes we have together? You might share some of the same challenges that I was experiencing myself. So my present situation at the time we started this process was just experiencing a bit of agita about opening up the Canvas gradebook and seeing so much red and so many zeros that I had entered. So not only does this show students aren't progressing, but then I'm worried, all right, what's happening? Was there something on my end? Are assignments or instructions not clear? Is the student okay? Do they need something? I have no idea. It's like an abyss, a void, and all you can do is worry. So at first, my initial reaction was just to, like you've seen here, um, make sure I put in zeros because that seems like a form of communication. But what I realized was that that zero, yes, it's a form of communication, but if I want to inspire action, it is probably the students who are already feeling a lot of self-efficacy and confidence and ability that would be most likely to see that zero and respond as opposed to see that zero and withdraw further. So the desired situation, I wanted obviously to have more assignments completed, even if they were late. And also the second part was I really was trying to figure out how to develop more of a line of communication. And this has become, as you may have experienced, especially important as we have more distributed and remote learners, where you don't have all those nudges that you have in face-to-face -face classes. So my the two ways I wanted my situation to change were to have more assignments completed and also to establish a line of communication. There is a ready-made Canvas tool that I started to use, which has some good features. So this message student who option, you have a screenshot on the left that shows when you go into your gradebook and click on that stoplight, those three buttons, one of the options that pops up in red is message students who. And the screenshot on the right shows what happens when you select that option. And you'll see you can change the category. Do you want to message stu students who haven't submitted, who have received a certain score, et cetera. I was interested in students who had not submitted and for whom I had entered a zero in the gradebook. You can see that the default subject is no submission for and whatever the assignment name is. So one of the things that was good about this tool is there's an opportunity to send a message. And when you send the message, it appears to the student that it's, they're the only one receiving it. So even though you can't personalize it with a name, you can say, hello, learner, um, hi, make it sound like it's coming to just one student. So those are some good features. It's super quick. You can see I had several people who hadn't submitted this particular assignment. So rather than messaging individually, this is a much quicker option. But to make that existing tool a little bit better, what we did was you started out the same way. Click on the message students who button on the left, but then you see on the right, a couple changes have been made. Instead of just using the default subject line, we tried to personalize it a bit. So in this example, you see 2.2 worksheet overdue, how can we help? So inviting a response or an action. And then in the message, we thought carefully about what kind of message we want to send. So if the default message, we would say typically, oh, this is overdue, please submit. What we tried to do is just make it a little bit more personable in this example. Hello, if you're receiving this message, we've not received your particular worksheet, you can still submit this. So it's letting them know how to take action and being really positive that we still look forward to receiving their work. And again, asking, how can we help? So that is the main tweak that we made to the existing tool. And I wanted to share three examples. We've tried a range of different kinds of messaging depending on the assignment. So here are three examples of different versions of that how can we help message. So this first one, good morning. If you're receiving this message, we've not re re yet received your 1.5 learner snapshot reflection assignment. It can be submitted through Tuesday 126 for partial credit. And we look forward to receiving your work and starting to get to know a bit of your story. And that last bit's related to the assignment itself. And again, we end with how can I help? Second example, similar, 
um, trying this approach, hey, good news, there's an opportunity here. If you're receiving this, you can still submit your work and give just one line of rationale for why this assignment is worth their time. And again, inviting an action. Please message us if you're stuck. We're here to help. And again, we look forward to receiving your assignment. Third example I tried um, to recognize, oh, you know, we all make mistakes. And again, the way our policy is set up in our class, students can submit late work up to a week past the due date. So there's an opportunity to still earn credit. So this one just started off with the idea of an oops. If you're receiving this, you made a mistake. What to do next? Give you a specific action item. And then again, the third line is trying to provide a rationale. These required appointments count for 30% of your grade. So getting back on track can make a big difference. What's already happened is water under the bridge. There's no point to belabor the fact that something's been missed. What I wanted to do was try to inspire action. So those are three examples, and I could share more if you're interested, just message me after this presentation. What has been gratifying, and I don't have quantitative data on this, I just have some student examples to share. I could probably find a little bit of information about if I got more responses from this more personal approach with the message student who feature. But here are four examples of replies that I got that were very helpful. So the first one in response to one of these outreach messages, the student is letting me know what's been going on with them. And I get a commitment, at least through this message, um, to get assignments in by a certain date. So that's super helpful. So then if I do follow up with another message or a phone call, I have some context. Second example you see on the bottom was the original message that was sent out. Hello, if you're receiving this message, there's an assignment that's not yet been submitted. Oh, I have a typo in there, assignment, no big whoop. Um, the student replies, not great grammar, not very professional. That is not my priority. That is a separate skill set. I just want to get some communication. And the student says, a problem I'm having is I can't find when my appointment was. All right. That gives me, thinks, helps me know to move a few steps back to, um, to start to help the student get back to actually submitting the assignment. They're a little bit further back than I would have anticipated. Um, this third example, again, the bottom is the part of the initial message and the top is the student's reply. And this one was super helpful. I wanted to message you and ask why I got a zero on this when I had my appointment view. Turns out the student was exactly right. For some reason, I made a mistake in the grade book. And so by sending this message out, the student had something easy, easy to access to click on. So rather than generating the message themselves, it's much easier, as we all know, to just reply to something that's already in your inbox. So the student used that opportunity to ask a related question, and we resolved it. And this fourth one is one of my favorite examples, because sometimes sending this message Either A, a student won't reply right away, they'll reply several weeks later on a totally different topic, but it makes me gratified to know that just that outreach that I had sent was an uh, access point for them to reply back. And sometimes they'll reply back with some other aspect of the assignment that I wasn't even aware of. So this bottom message, it wasn't about missing assignments. It was actually about just some additional resources to help with a particular assignment, but that was enough to prompt the student evidently to take a look at what they had submitted and use that channel of communication to let me know, oh, I noticed I turned in a blank version of that assignment. Here it is. So that ended up being super helpful, even though that wasn't the purpose of the original message. So again, the desired situation was to have assignments completed and a line of communication established. And using this tiny tweak to the existing message student who feature has been actually really helpful and it does not take very much time at all. And I can also save the messages that I craft so I don't have to recreate them again and again. So I have a set of templates that I can use as starting points for future communications. So more blue, less red in the grade book is great and knowing about students' particular situations is helpful too. So thanks for joining us and for listening and for thinking about how this kind of approach might work for you. My email is here. If you're doing similar things that have helped you connect with students, particularly distributed learners that you might not be seeing in class on a regular basis, I would love to know what you're doing. So thanks again for attending. Have a good day.